car in here, hoping to increase the amount of movement at this point, but it's not moving far enough really to say you were to mount a, a magnet on here some kind of way to pass a generator coil to generate your electricity here, you're not having a lot of movement there. I got about a half an inch there. Here we have, I believe it's about three or four inches. So we are amplifying the amount of movement there for more travel. But uh, very less than fantastic results. I had I had this pivot point different places and I got some extreme oscillations where it was tipping and it would kind of start to double tap and start hopping like that and it's very heavy and you don't want things swinging around the way this thing can swing itself around. And I ended up having to add another spring here and the spring there is a very, very very stiff spring. That is a high performance automotive valve spring that's again very stiff spring. That's probably how much it's comp being compressed right there. That's probably about how much you can compress it with your bare hands with all your might. Uh, I tried the uh, wheel with the chain pulley deal, yanking on the chain, rotating the wheel as your as your flywheel. That's why I actually made this. Uh, yeah, that thing worked beautiful when I was tapping on the pendulum but when I stopped pushing on the pendulum it just wound itself down and burned out right away and stopped. I think I may have had too much tension on the bearings and the little drive mechanism or clutch or ratchet whatever the hell is inside of one of those rims but uh, I'm going to do more research into that and I think I might try that again but I thought I'd try this and uh, see how that worked and I got it to oscillate it was a big huge pain and it took me a few hours but I did end up getting it to oscillate with this extra doohickey. Whether that's useful or not, we will have to wait and see. This right here, the mounting the pulley, was also the only way I could get this to work. I had this piece right here actually slides on the shaft. See where I polished it up to try to make it run smoother. Too much friction sliding there. There's no bearing or anything. And then I I tried to mount it to the wheel and have some kind of have it mounted here and connected to this lever somewhere. I tried to mimic this movement is what I was doing, but with a direct connection, which if you can see that or not, I don't know, but it's moving right there, and you, with a, with a direct connection, that would have to be 
that mounting point right there would have to be absolutely in the perfect position in order for this thing to work right and oscillate and not start doing some crazy shit and slap you in the face with your machine. But that ended up working very well. And I also noticed it's now it is oscillating when the pendulum swings both ways. When the pendulum swings to the left, it causes it an oscillation, and when it swings back to the right, you get an oscillation. And in the other configuration with just the spring here and the weights and no extra lever and no spring there, I was getting like a one-sided oscillation where the frame here was only getting a strong dip or lift. I can't remember which one it was. But when the, when the pendulum went in one direction, the frame would oscillate. Yeah, it was to the left. When the pendulum was swinging to the left, the frame would go up, and that would be synchronized, which I believe has something to do with this. It might have something to do with this. Uh, the pendulum is actually offset from this axle here. The pendulum is actually hanging just off this side of the axle. It's not directly hanging from the center of that pivot point. So, useful or not, I don't know. To be continued.